How did you begin? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, the very first competition we ever did was uh, Top Truck in 1996. And it seemed like after that we were trying to get into anything we could get our hands on. And whatever, you know, we did desert racing and and then rock crawling kind of came about right around 97, 98. And, mm -hmm. and that got real big. And then, and then the rock crawling turned into rock racing and we did XRA for a few years and but I've always seen what you guys do and I always want I mean that was probably the first thing I ever seen that's all I've ever wanted to do is rip up one of them hills and so we do what we can here with these small hills and and have fun with it yeah I used to come over and see it uh, uh, how, how do you think the uh, formula off-road would work here in, in the states it, I think it would work good if, if uh, if we had a hill big enough, I don't know. I, I've seen the hills you guys have; they're pretty good. I, but yeah, it looks like fun. Some are big, some are smaller. Yeah, <laughs> the ones I seen look big. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what do you say for a, for a new guy that wanted to come into you know rock racing and stuff? How should he begin? You know, um, starting out, getting money, building. Yeah, you know, a lot of people they they start and they they start real small you know they think the stock class is where you start but to me I think that all the cars cost about the same one's just a little better they all have the same it takes about the same amount of work to build one so I would just say you know and a lot of times there's a lot of good used cars out there that people could buy for cheaper than it takes to build one it's very expensive to build a car yeah. where people get where they need to sell one so they get rid of them for probably half the cost sometimes so I think a guy could buy a car, you know, and buy something good and solid and just, you know, the way I learned was just jumping right in the middle of it, so. Yeah, jumping in the deep end of the pool. Yeah, yeah, and then you learn how to swim and, uh, you know, a lot of people read. I don't I don't believe everything I read. I think it's, I learned from all my mistakes, so. Yeah, <laughs> and you've done pretty well in the, in the hammers. Yeah, we got, I think we got we got lucky. Maybe everybody else didn't do so good, but but we got lucky a couple of times in, in one and you know, the hammers is more of a long endurance race, and I tell my kids, you know, you got to finish to win. It's not always about speed, even though we go to, we want to go as fast as we can, but you still, you know, that goal is to finish, and if you finish, then more than likely you're going to be in the top ten, because not very many people finish. Yeah, and, and, and you ha you set up your cars yourself and have them and build them and uh, try to figuring out, you know, the best combination for the speed and then the rock rolling. Yeah, but well... So. It started out, you know, we were all running straight axle cars, and a long time ago I built an independent front suspension rock crawler, and it didn't do real good rock crawling because they had us, you know, you have to go through the cones and it's real tight, and they make you go in spots. But Ultra Four, you got everywhere. You can go, you know, you can make your own path. They don't really pin you into a small area, and the independent was very fast. So I took and oh, and I think it was '09. I built my second independent car to compete in King of the Hammers and you know we had bugs it wasn't ever with the suspension it was always just dumb the car was so fast that it was harder on components you could hold it to the wood so transmission started to need more cooling and oil you know engine oil everything needed more you know redundancy and backup just because it was it was such a fast car and that's you know that's that's new, where new, we're at new problems there and yeah just new challenges and yeah, and yeah. now we're get, now they're getting faster, and we're getting more gearing in them, and it's they're pretty insane, you know. Yeah. Kind of like a watch, you know, you wind it up. And yeah. So what you <laughs> see the go. future bring? What what are your future? I think you know right that. now we're kind of we're limited on what we're doing right now because of you know just trying to keep the transmissions, the transfer cases, and everything together, and the gearing that we have. I think you're going to see, you know, I think Advanced Adapters is coming out with some new stuff for their transfer cases and stuff that are going to, you know, like a single speed case and and something to make it a lot stronger and then you'll, you'll start seeing us pour more power to it. So, yeah. yeah, and then it just becomes who's the biggest idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of idiots here. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And uh, anything you would like to add in the, finally? I hope to see you guys over in your country soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.
plugs. I thought about it, but then you'll have trouble getting them out. No, I make them loose. They don't need to be. I was thinking about throwing it and putting them in there, but.